To start, bromine is added to a test tube. This is bromine that was made in a previous video and it was stored in my homemade ampules. I show here that it can be easily opened by breaking it open with a pair of pliers. Then, aluminum foil is added to the test tube. Due to the protective oxide layer on the outside of the aluminum, it takes a little while to react. The aluminum reacts violently with the bromine to form aluminum bromide. When slowed down to about one-fourth the speed, you can actually see a molten red-hot ball of aluminum bouncing up and down the test tube. The white pieces that you see flying out of the test tube is actually liquid aluminum. When the reaction is done, a little bit of water is added to the test tube and you can see that it reacts pretty violently. This happens not only because the test tube is still hot, but it contains a lot of aluminum bromide which reacts exothermically with the water. Eventually enough water can be added to fully neutralize all the aluminum bromide and cool down the test tube. When the test tube had been cleaned out, what was found at the bottom was a solid ball of aluminum metal. The reaction actually got hot enough to liquefy and melt the aluminum. I decided to do a second run. Also, when I crack the ampule, you might notice that I actually get some of the bromine spilled onto my glove. I kept this part of the video in as a reminder that things do go wrong. However, because I was prepared and wearing gloves, I simply took them off as soon as possible and everything was fine. For the second run, I opted to use the aluminum ball that I got in the previous one. And in this run, due to the decreased surface area, it took a much longer time to react. And once it did start reacting, it wasn't nearly as spectacular as the first one. The liquefied aluminum shot out of the test tube that I mentioned earlier can actually be found scattered all around the base of the stand. 